to the big board, though, first. <laughs> when uh, Let's go to Steve Ratner. Hey, Steve, you know, I asked last week about, you know, all, all these positive economic signs. You had a, yet another chart yesterday talking about investment in manufacturing in the United States just exploding in ways that are really heartening. Uh, and yet there's this dichotomy. There's a dichotomy between what the economic numbers are showing and how Americans are feeling. You've got some charts to explain why. Tell us about it. Yeah, Joe, it's a question you and I have talked about uh, fairly often and fairly regularly. You've asked it to me a few times. I don't know that I have a perfect answer, but let me show you some numbers that may at least help everybody who's uh, on the show at the moment help answer this question. So let's start over here and, and talk about how bad people feel at the moment. First of all, it's interesting that the country has been on a wrong track going all the way back, really, to after the 9-11 moment subsided. But you've had this very, very steadily negative feeling uh, among Americans about right track, wrong track. You can see on optimism about the economy, notwithstanding what you just mentioned, a lot of other positive data, steeply, still deeply in negative territory. You can see consumer sentiment, notwithstanding, again, good news, deeply in negative territory. And not surprisingly, when you look at presidential approval ratings, you can see that President Biden is unfortunately uh, in deeply negative ter territory after having had a good start to his presidency. Even Obama had a fairly mixed up and down, but some positive times in, in uh, positive territory. So let's look at, an, at a, try to look at a correlation between some economic conditions and how people feel. So if you look down here, this is what we call the misery index. This is the combination coined back in the 70s during a terrible time in the country, of course, combination of unemployment plus inflation added up. And so you can see way back in May 1980, the misery index was in really bad shape. But then if you look at that against consumer sentiment and you draw a line, do a statistical analysis, you draw a line and say, what is the correlation between these two? The correlation is quite high. And you can see that even President uh, Trump, and each of these dots represents a month, even President Trump essentially hugged that line. President Biden, on the other hand, his numbers have come in way below that line. In other words, consumer sentiment is far worse than what would be suge su suggested by Biden's uh, actual performance in terms of unemployment plus inflation. Well, I, you know, and Steve, let me interrupt you here, too, because it was always it was always so interesting that Donald Trump ran around every day talking about the greatest economy ever. I've got the greatest economy ever. I've got the greatest economy ever. And actually, people not just on Fox News, people on this network would begin their questions by going, well, of course, Donald Trump has the best economy in history or whatever. It's like that that got into the bloodstream of of not just people around Trump, but, you know, journalists who who he said it so much, they started believing it. I just I just want to throw a little bit of reality onto this even before covid. We could talk about the thing that matters uh, so much to me, and that is the debt. Uh, just record-setting debts, the biggest budget-busting uh, budgets ever, the biggest deficits ever. But even beyond that, even with all the spending, even with all the tax cuts, post-World War II, he ranked seventh in GDP growth behind Jimmy Carter even. Behind Jimmy Carter, and, and I think Gerald Ford and several others, even before COVID. So he really didn't have a strong economy if you're measuring it actually by other presidents. And yet you look at that consumer confidence and people just assume Trump had a great economy because Trump kept saying, I have a great economy. So that may be simply a question of, of salesmanship, presidential leadership, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, Trump convinced people he had very high consumer sentiment numbers. He also did have low, uninflation, low inflation and low unemployment. I take your point about his relative performance to the other presidents. But Biden also has a good economy at the moment. We have 3.7 percent unemployment. Yes, we have some inflation, but I'll show you some numbers on incomes and things still doing well. And yet people, he has not been able to or people have not responded to it by having a reasonable amount of positive attitude toward the economy and consumer sentiment is down here in the toilet back in June 22. It was as bad as it was in May 80, even though the economy was obviously vastly better than it was in May 80. Yeah, OK, so let's go to the next uh, the next chart about inflation and uh, the impact on uh, the national outlook.
So let's start with a point you, you sort of made there, which was people actually are in pretty good economic situations, and they actually think they're in pretty good economic situations. 73% of Americans think their personal finances are either good or very good. That's a big number. But when you ask them about their communities, only 39% say their communities are good or very good in Steve, terms of Steve, hold on. I got to stop you. I'm sorry. I got to stop you. You just said something that I know is surprising to a lot of a lot of people that are watching this show right now. Three out of four Americans. We hear all the bitching and all the whining about how bad the economy is from the right, the Trump right. Three out of four Americans think their economic situation is either good or very good. I mean, this would suggest, again, a massive disconnect, not from what Joe Biden's saying, but what Americans are saying about their own good economic situation. They are saying that, Joe. That's exactly right. They're also saying that their communities, they think only 40 percent good or excellent. They're saying in the country, only 18 percent good or excellent. And if you ask people, where do you think you're going to be a year from now? They're actually not that optimistic. They're actually more pessimistic than optimism. So it's a very odd set of personal feelings. One possible explanation for all of this is inflation. People hate inflation. It is one of them. That's why it's in the misery index. But you can see nonetheless that under Joe Biden, the consumer price index has gone up by 15.3 percent. Personal incomes have gone up by 19.2 percent, meaning that people have still stayed ahead of inflation as a whole. But at that said, there are a number of categories, a lot of sensitive things that people buy often, or at least are very exposed to the prices of, that have gone up by much, much higher numbers, food, cars, energy, uh, and this is automobiles here. And so on the one hand, they, their incomes, if you, you know, as an economist would look at it, have gone up after inflation, but they are still feeling a lot of the effects of inflation. And I think a lot of the uh, pundits, so to speak, would say that this is a part of why those other numbers I showed you before look so bad. Yeah, I talked before about how people in the media were going, well, of course, yes, Donald Trump's economy is the best just because he kept saying it. But media negativity also has had a big impact uh, on, on, on Biden as well. Um, and it, it, it's pulled him down. And just a, just a side comment here, Steve, most people in the media they don't remember. Well, they did. They never reported on inflation. Uh, this was this is a shock for a lot of economists who had never dealt with inflation in their adult life. This was a shock for uh, politicians who have never had to go around and knock on doors and explain what's happening with inflation. Uh, and it is it's been for a lot of people, younger people in the media as well, who don't remember 1979, 1980, 1981, when, you know, interest rates were shooting up into the high teens. So to your point about that, Joe, there is evidence that media certainly affects people's views, and that's what these charts here show. And so this basically asks the question of the news I see about inflation is mostly blank, positive, negative. And so you can see if you look at their sentiment and you compare it to what's actually happening, you can obviously see a big correlation. When inflation spiked up, there was a negative feeling toward inflation. Inflation, inflation becomes fairly benign, still a little bit negative, but, 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 uh, but pretty benign. And then the spike in inflation again, obviously very negative perceptions of what they're seeing in the media about inflation, and obviously that also affects public opinion. But here's, that's not surprising. That's probably what you would have expected. But here's something I think that is surprising, which is if you do the same exact analysis for unemployment, uh, and jobs, you can see the news about I see about employment is mostly, and back there it was very, very negative. We had the great jobs explosion here in the in the uh, 2000s, uh, up to and including COVID. Obviously, you have COVID, um, but then the jobs numbers start to recover, and they get all the way back to where they were here. But the negativity doesn't recover. It, it in fact, mm -hmm. it turns negative. It was positive before COVID. It went negative, even though the jobs numbers are so good, and it has stayed negative. Why is that? A couple of possible explanations. Of course, none of us really know the answer. One is that there is more talk about, lay about layoffs at the moment, and that may well be having an effect on people's, on people's psyches. But, uh, but beyond that, it's simply, it's simply a perception 
that the job situation is not nearly as good as uh, as it is, for, frankly, and as and as at least some people are reporting it.